In this video, let's talk about some super powerful computers for virtual production and generative AI with Puget Systems. All right, real quick, you're watching Video Brand. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make this NAB coverage possible. Massive, Metricool, OpenReal, Adspective, and Vestigit. Be sure to check them out. Links are in the description below. And now, back to the interview. All right, what's up? I'm here with Matt from Puget Systems. Uh, let's talk about virtual production, AI stuff. But first off, let's get an overview. What is Puget Systems? Yeah, so Puget Systems, we're a workstation manufacturer. We do servers too, uh, but here especially, it's about NLEs, uh, virtual production, like you mm -hmm. just mentioned, uh, a lot of Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but more and more, people have been pushing the boundaries when it comes to like AI. So that, that's mm -hmm. one of the demos we're showing here mm -hmm. is using like stable diffusion to do like live action to, uh, in this case, it was an anime style video from uh, Corridor Digital. Uh, so a lot of that stuff where we're used to in this market, like very fixed, like here's the software we're using, here's our workflow, done. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, here's the software we're using, but we're also, hey, we're dabbling in all these other things yeah. that really is not a finished product. Like Stable Diffusion is very much, you gotta get in there and really like tweak it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean with your use cases, I think the one thing that's always interesting with your website is it's mm -hmm. like, what are you trying to do? And yeah. it's like your PCs aren't just sold by spec, but it's sort of like, oh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to edit video on this platform at this resolution, and then you kind of create these systems that are yeah, designed exactly. to handle what yeah. you're trying to do. Yeah, well, and it's really interesting. We very much have two very distinct customer bases. We have the tech enthusiasts who love technology. They try to keep up with like the latest CPUs and GPUs but they just can't keep up with it on their own like because they're video editors, they're animators, so they have to spend their time doing that, so they want to work with someone that they, that they can trust and yeah. like talk specs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have the other side is maybe a video editor or a studio where they don't care what the hardware is. All they care about is it's going to be able to do what they need it to do, mm -hmm. and so those customers, we never even talk cores or you know RAM amounts or anything like that. We talk, what's your uh, software, what's your workflow, what codecs are you working with, and then we just tell them this is uh -huh. what it is you need. At what point of someone's either process or what they're thinking about things, does it do you fit in for um, from going like with an off-the-shelf solution mm -hmm. and then also from, I guess, going the DIY route? So yeah. where it's kind of Puget to fit in that? In that yeah, Spectrum. yeah, yeah. So we're very much, I don't know, kind of right in between, really, because our systems, we don't have anything off the shelf. It's mm. all built to order uh, because we have a lot of options that aren't available sometimes to like the bigger companies. Some of them are locked into, we have to use Intel CPUs or we have to use only the NVIDIA Quadro GPUs. Uh, we have a lot more freedom. And so every generation when new stuff comes out, we look at it and we say, okay, now, this is the best thing for it. Mm. And so we, we lean that way. Um, so like right now we're actually very like 50-50 like Intel and AMD on the CPUs. At some points we might be 80% AMD or we might be 80% Intel. Uh, we're just a lot more agile and we can change mm. what it is we're selling based on what is actually the right thing at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, I believe you do like a lot of testing and also oh, yeah. just like to kind of understand like what, how things perform. Yeah, yeah, well, and that's a big thing of what we do. So we started that up probably longer than I think, I want to say 10 years is probably more than that. Uh, but yeah, we started up our labs department and we just saw such a big lack of information. Uh, there were like great reviews out there for gaming, but if you wanted to look up, well, what's the best processor for Premiere Pro, there was nothing. There was like a few people on like forums who were just making stuff up and then it was taken <laughs> as gospel. Uh, so yeah, we spun the, up our labs department and now yeah, we test whenever there's new hardware, sometimes when there's major software updates, like new Premiere Pro 23.3. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at that and see if there's anything, um, you know, anything big in the performance side. Maybe sometimes we catch little bugs. We're just like, oh, okay, we gotta, you know, maybe you don't wanna upgrade to that one. You know, and that's true of anything. That's not just Adobe. Um, but yeah, we do all of that testing in-house. Uh, and the really unique thing is that we then take that, we put articles together, and we put them on our website for mm -hmm. anyone to read. There's no yeah. paywall, there's no registration wall. It's just, it's there. Um, I know some of our competitors absolutely do testing. Right? They gotta make sure that their stuff works mm -hmm. too, but they keep that internal, whereas yeah. we, we just put it all out there. So if you want to be adventurous, try to build your system or use some of the parts, yeah, you kind of have that research out there. Yeah, well, and you can always look at our configure pages too and see exactly what it is we recommend for different workflows. Mm. And yeah, go for it. 
I mean, if someone's going to build their own system, they're going to build their own system no matter what. We would rather they end up building the right system. <laughs> yeah, and and then you know, I mean, like it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or you know, it's it's great performance, and you know, even from like a business standpoint, that's still great for us because those often are the people that eventually, when they get really into animation or video editing mm. or whatever. And again, just like I was talking about, like some of our customers are very tech enthusiasts. They might not have time anymore, but man, they know and trust us. Mm -hmm. So they're going to come back. So yeah. it, in some ways, it's a long-term investment. Mm -hmm. In other ways, it's just we love to share information. We love mm -hmm. to educate. And so we just put as much out there to the public as we can. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good note too, because you also have a really active uh, YouTube channel <laughs> as well, right? So I have like, like a lot of resources and uh, Yeah, we have some. Uh, recently, we've been doing more just partnering with a lot of the, the, like the influencers on YouTube that we work with, uh, a lot of the educators on mm. YouTube. So we're starting to do a little bit more uh, that way rather than our own YouTube channel, because honestly, a lot of those guys are way better at it than we are. <laughs> we are very much, uh, we have a very diverse company, but we're very much like tech nerds. <laughs> very much, we're not we're not content creators. <laughs> like we can write articles, but when it gets to video, it's a little bit less. We always have to bring other people in because that's not as much who we are. We we love this, and we love seeing what other people can do. But that doesn't mean that we can actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We just don't have that creative bone in a lot of us. Yeah. Um, so when people are getting into virtual production mm -hmm. and they're like getting PCs to power the system, like what are some things that you have to start considering that PCs sort of need to be like built for it? Yeah. Like, with well, virtual a, production. A lot of virtual production is. I would actually say that the PC is almost the easy part. Mm -hmm. There's just so many different parts that go into it. I mean, you got the LED walls, and you have mm -hmm. the syncing syncing of the walls and if you have multiple nodes powering different parts of the, the panel you've got to sync all those together so you don't get like tearing you got to sync the camera to that and all of that so honestly in my opinion the computer is almost again kind of the easy i mean you, you have to have enough cores you want to use professional rtx uh cards and then yeah, all the syncing hardware you need for it and some of that stuff is kind of specialized you might not know what these sync cards are but yeah it's just Virtual production is so much more than just the computer. It is so much, and that's why we partner. Uh, View Studios is one of our uh, mm. partners in the virtual production space, and man, they those guys are just pushing the boundaries constantly, mm. and we rely on them really to help us navigate it. Because just like AI, it's just the wild west right now. People are doing their own things and figuring out new stuff, and it's amazing to see it change but it's going to be different one year to the next. There's all these new standards that they're trying to work out now, and that'll change everything. Um, so it's it's a moving target, <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to use a Wild West analogy for AI. Yeah. Um, so AI, obviously, a hot topic now, and a lot of stuff has sort of been generated through uh, cloud stuff, but mm -hmm. as like there's kind of been talk more of like running models on machines. Yeah. And so do you kind of see that as like, the next domain of where the like kind of custom builds is going to be when people start running yeah. their own models, their own AI stuff like locally. Yeah, and we're seeing that a lot. Um, luckily, a lot of the systems that we end up building for something like DaVinci Resolve in this case uh, is also really good uh, for doing those models. Uh, and it, some of it isn't too bad. Uh, so the actual like uh, making of the images mm. isn't it, it's, it's resource intensive, but you can often do it on a machine that you already have. It might just take longer. Sure. The really hard side is the training of the models. Mm. Um, and yeah, a lot of people do that in the cloud because they can get GPUs with massive amounts of video memory. They can do it over hundreds of GPUs, but it is incredibly expensive <laughs> to do that. <laughs> that is not something if you're a small studio, you're going to make that kind of investment. Um, so yeah, we're also starting to do more where they want to train their own models and so they need like video cards with lots of video memory. So we help them make sure that it's going to be able to do it or push it as far as we can with a physical box, whether it's a workstation or a server. A lot of times it's the same limitation. So yeah, we're seeing a lot, a lot more of that now. We're investing a lot in that you know, like internally for performance testing because mm -hmm. uh, so much of it's like you're saying, it's wild, wild west. You can do it in so many different ways and you can do it in so many different wrong ways as far as like performance goes. And right now, a lot of the work is going into making it work and like make good images, but there's not a ton of work going into making it run as fast as possible. So we're trying to spend a lot of work about like, okay, if you want to do stable diffusion, train your own models, what sort of optimization should you be using if you have an NVIDIA GPU or an Intel mm -hmm. GPU or an AMD GPU? Uh, and working with 
NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel to try to almost really add to make some of those standards, just like what's happening in virtual production right now, that they're trying to standardize on a lot of stuff. Same thing on AI, and we're trying to do our best to help out with that as well. Yeah, what are some of the wrong ways that, like you could, direction you could go if you're trying to do a build or something with, with AI? Yeah, well a lot of it is very deep in the development side. So if you're going through a tutorial and you're loading up Stable Diffusion, it's really not on you to do a lot of those optimizations. It's really mm -hmm. on the people that are writing the underlying code. So for most people, it's not really a factor that they really have much of a control over, so I really wouldn't worry too much about it. But AI, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's just like working with Adobe to you know, do what we can to help them make their products you know, the fastest, stablest you know, product it can be. We're just trying to do that same thing. Now, a video editor is not going to go in and change the code for Premiere, so yeah. same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then can you walk us through what we're looking at uh, here with this? Uh, yeah, process? sure. Yeah, so this is a project from uh, one of our partners, long partner, love working with these guys, uh, Corridor Digital. And so they are a VFX house and they wanted to do a live action to anime style video. And they had a lot of fun with it. They did it as a like a rock, paper, scissors, kind of overly dramatic uh, kind of thing. You know, what you kind of see in a lot of AI. And so they shot everything on green screen. Um, this guy's his name is Nico, and they actually took the time to train a model of what does Nico's face look like. So mm. the model actually knows his face, his beard, his hair, his do they eyes. Train that from footage shot, or do they just yeah. take like actual like just images? Both. So. so they use I think they use some of these shots, but then they also just had them had him stand there and just make every facial expression oh. he could think of, and they recorded it from a bunch of different angles and they fed all that into the AI, and again, it learns what his face looks like, and then they did a style kind of uh, thing in Stable Diffusion to turn it into this anime style, and there is so much that went into like getting this right, like the right prompt, the right mm -hmm. negative prompts, like what do they not want to see, um, and then there's a whole bunch of other settings, and they actually have like an hour-long tutorial uh, on how they did it, and like that's an hour long where like you're following his step-by-step -step guide. So they cool. spent a lot of time yeah. making it work. Um, and then even then they have to bring it into DaVinci Resolve and they still had to do a lot of post-processing because like AI and Stable Diffusion, it can do every frame, but it, it's not good about like the flow between those frames. So it's not like an animator where like, you know, you're flipping between, you know, frame one, frame two, and you're like, mm -hmm. you're keeping it consistent things like the shadows on like the face can move around a whole lot. Like you see like the shadow like disappears and then pops mm -hmm. back in. Uh, so they had to add a lot of uh, like deflicker nodes and sometimes they had to go in and tweak it. So it's very much not a, here's my video, change the style, okay, we're done. Oh. Uh, and you know, and then they still have all of the background, the, you know, the environments and everything else. But yeah, it's really fun to see like how over the top kind of the acting is because they wanted that over the top right. animation right. style. No, that's great. And then what were some of the considerations in um, for building the machine or having a machine that can like yeah. key things that like makes this as smooth as possible? Yeah, so this machine that I think that they used primarily for this was not even supposed to be an AI machine mm. because I mean, they want to tinker with things. They want to try it, but they're not going to get a whole machine just for something that they're just going to tinker with. Like they don't know if it's going to work. Uh, so these were luckily uh, systems that we are giving them for uh, DaVinci Resolve are also terrific for this because DaVinci Resolve wants lots of GPU, lots of vi video memory, mm. lots of you know, performance, and that's very similar to what you want for Stable Diffusion. Now, if they're getting into this more, they might want to bump up from, uh, they're using GeForce cards a lot, the GeForce mm. RTX 4090 with 24 gigs of VRAM. Um, if they're doing more of this, we'll probably want to bump them up to the NVIDIA RTX line, uh, especially the RTX 6000 ADA, because uh, it has 48 gigs of VRAM. Mm. And so, you know, it's just like storage on your hard drive. If you don't have enough room on your hard drive to like copy the files you want to have on your drive, there's nothing you can do. Like that, it's just, it's a hard limit. And it's the same thing with video memory. So if they want to do more complex models, higher resolution things, they just are going to need those cards with more video memory. Cool. Uh, I don't remember if we said this before we were rolling or if we said it again now, <laughs> but I think you said it was uh, like about 30 sec uh, 30 minutes? 30 seconds. Uh, it's, so yeah, per, yeah, per, per, per frame. frame rendering. Yeah, somewhere between 30 seconds to, to a minute. Um, and yeah, I mean, this whole long video, plus I'm sure there's extra content that wasn't actually used at the end. Um, and, uh, with a GP, if, like if it had a beefed up GPU, would that cut down on the... That's about as fast as this one you can do. I and mean, mm -hmm. there are tricks you can do, like um, 
this is doing the entire frame, but hey, if you cut it down so it's only him, you know, that might help out mm. a little bit. You can just down the resolution because, you know, if this is going, like this is not the whole frame, this doesn't have to be, you know, 4K. It can be, you know, 800 by 600. So really bringing it down is really a good thing to do, <laughs> uh, more than just throwing horsepower at it. Right, you know, okay. It's not always about just getting the most compute, it's about being efficient with your workflow, but, um, there is a lot of work still to come with like stable diffusion. Like I, I don't believe it supports multi GPUs right now. Mm. So you can spin up two of yeah. them, and which is fine for this because you can say half the frames go here, yeah. half the frames go over there. So there are ways that you can speed it up with multi GPU, but it just takes a lot of time. But yeah, luckily they have a whole lot of systems from us, and so they can on each one of those again they can do you know frame zero to one hundred on this system, frames one hundred and one to two hundred on that system and just power through it, yeah. you know, it's just doing it in parallel. Yeah. Well, cool, this is exciting updates and uh, thanks for the overview. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. It. Yeah. Thanks for watching the video. For more of our NAB coverage, be sure to check out the playlist right here and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next episode.